So when moving your solution from on-premises to the Azure cloud or any other cloud for that matter like AWS or GCP, the initial questions that comes to everyone's minds are how much cost do I need to incur when moving the solution to the cloud? And the second question is what are the factors that affect my cost in the cloud? So these are some of the questions that everyone thinks while moving to the cloud solution. After all, cost can be the deciding factor whether you are an individual or a multinational company. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard and I welcome you all to our free course series on Azure Fundamentals. This course will prepare you not only to work real time on Azure in your jobs but also prepare you for AZ900 certifications. So in this video let's talk about Azure cost and what are the factors that affect cost in Microsoft Azure. Critical concept for everyone no matter if you're already working or planning to work on cloud solution. And please be informed this is the start of the section 3 describe Azure management and governance holding up to 35% in the real exam and in the previous episodes we have already covered described cloud concepts and described Azure architecture and services. Now friends before we even jump to the cost it's important to understand which type of cost are we talking about. So by now we have discussed many times that Azure shifts the development cost from capital expenditure also known as CAPEX to an operational expenditure also known as OPEX. And this is not just true for Azure you take the example of any other cloud for example Amazon or GCP everything depends on operational expenditure or OPEX. And to start with my friends let's say that our solutions can have many different components and services for example we can have storage virtual machines ip addresses databases in fact there are other components as well such as resource group network bandwidth so these are some of the few components that make up a complete solution but how exactly is the cost determined well it depends on many factors such as resource type consumption, maintenance, geography, network traffic, subscription type and Azure marketplace. So let's understand all these factors one by one. So the type of resource is perhaps the most important factor in determining the cost whether you are creating a storage account or a virtual machine, a database or maybe just a public IP address costs can hugely differ on the type of the resource. Now let's take a deeper look here consider that you are creating an Azure account now the kind of storage account you create whether it's a file type or a blob type table or queue type the cost will differ accordingly and not just that there are other factors also for example what kind of performance tier do you want what kind of access tier is needed whether it's a hot access tier or cold or archive access tier. Additionally what redundancy settings are needed in your solution for example local or global what is the region of the storage account all these factors would be considered while calculating the cost. Now let's take one more example of another resource let's talk about virtual machine. In case of the virtual machine you have to consider the licensing cost of the operating system and the other software the processor and the number of cores for the virtual machine. And is that all in case of virtual machine? Well definitely not. There are other factors such as attached storage or network interface. So just like with storage provisioning of same virtual machine in different regions may result in different cost. Now friends I am sure that you might be thinking that do I have to pay for every resource or service that I use or are there some resource type for which I do not have to pay. Well most understandably there is definitely cost associated with most of the resources there are some few exceptions. For example in case you have private IP address or resource groups in these kind of resources you do not have to pay anything and please pay attention I said private IP addresses. They are free but not the public IP address. And friends here I want to remind you to please watch our AZ900 real exam question and answer series. A total of 765 questions will ensure that you are certified on AZ900. The link for the entire playlist is in the description box in the i button on the top right corner and in the pinned comment. And here friends I must tell you that whenever you provision any resource Azure creates a metered instance for that resource and it is this meter that tracks all the resource usage and generate a usage record that is used to calculate your bill. Now let's understand the second most important factor and that is consumption. 
Now, quite understandably, if you consume more computing resources in a particular billing cycle, of course, your payments will be higher. And conversely, if your usage is lower for a resource in a particular billing cycle, of course, your payments will be reduced. This billing mechanism or pricing mechanism is straightforward and provides the most flexibility. And here comes a very important concept, pay as you go. So friends, pay as you go is the most consistent cloud payment model wherein you are billed for a specific resource you utilize during a billing cycle. Nevertheless, Azure also offers reserved pricing. Various services such as virtual machines, database, compute, storage allow you to commit to a certain level of usage and receive heavy discounts, sometimes reaching up to 72%. So basically, you are making a commitment to utilize and pay for a specific period. Let's say that you want to reserve a resource like a virtual machine for one year or three years. And in return to this long term commitment, Azure offers you steep discount. Do expect some questions around pricing, costing and reserved instances in the EZ900 exam. And of course, for all these kind of questions and other questions on other topics, you can always check out our EZ900 real exam question and answer series. Now let's talk about maintenance. So in order to ensure cost control, it's crucial to consistently manage your cloud environment for instance, when you provision a virtual machine, supplementary resources such as storage and networking are also provisioned. However, my friends, please pay attention. This is a very critical point. When you deprovision a virtual machine, these additional resources may not be deprovisioned simultaneously with the virtual machine. So what's happening is when you provision a virtual machine, I told you there are other resources such as storage associated with the virtual machine. But when you deprovision these resources, the additional ones are still existing there and adding up to your bill. And that's why I say a good vigilance and monitoring your resources is very important. Analyzing the need of the resources and promptly removing any unnecessary resources, you can effectively manage and minimize your cloud costs. So that was the maintenance factor. Now let's understand how geography can affect your cost in the cloud solutions. So as you all know, my friends, Azure's infrastructure is distributed worldwide. What does it mean for you? Well, this allows you to deploy your solutions and the services in the location that is closer to your customers. But in case, let's say that you have a global reach or your application is accessed worldwide. In that case, you can also deploy your cloud solution at a centralized location. But remember, this distributed network, this distributed infrastructure also impacts your cost. And how exactly is that? Well, the cost associated with power, labor, taxes or fees, they all differ across location, resulting in differences in the deployment cost for Azure resources based on the chosen region. And friends, additionally, geography also influences network traffic and associated costs. For example, transferring data within Europe is more cost effective compared to moving data between Europe or Asia or South America. So essentially, data transfer between different geographies is costlier than the data transfer within the same geography. And now that we're talking about the data transfer, it's very important that we talk about network traffic. See, while the inbound data transfers, now you may ask what is inbound? Well, the data going into the Azure data centers, these are called inbound data transfers. Well, these are typically free, but the cost of outbound data transfers, which is the data that leaves the Azure data centers, this is determined by your billing zone. And what is a zone? Well, a zone represents a geographic cluster of Azure regions that are grouped together for the billing purposes. For detailed information on pricing related to data ingress, which is also known as inbound data transfers or data egress, which is also known as outbound and the transfers, please refer to the bandwidth pricing page from Microsoft Azure. I need not to say you will definitely get some questions in AZ900 exam around this concept. Now, the next factor that I want to talk about and that affects cost is subscription type. So certain type of Azure subscriptions comes with the usage allowance that impacts the associated cost. For example, an Azure free trial subscription grants you an access to various Azure products and services that are free for a duration of 12 months. But wait, 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 do you actually know what is free trial subscription? Well, this is a free subscription that Azure offers to anyone. You create an account with Azure, choose a free subscription. Well, this free subscription provides you a credit of $200 that can be utilized initial 30 days of signing up. 
And it's really wonderful, my friends. You can actually use this free credits of $200 and explore all the services and products from Microsoft absolutely free. But coming back to the topic, I was saying that subscription type also affects the cost. So in case you have a free trial subscription, in that case, there is no cost. But of course, when you move to the pay as you go subscription, you have to pay for the services and the products as you use them. Now, let's talk about another interesting factor that affects cost and that is Azure Marketplace. So Azure Marketplace provides you the opportunity to procure solution and the services from the third party vendors that are based on Azure. So you can say that these are ready made solution for different business needs. But it's important to realize that even though you are making a purchase through Azure Marketplace, you may be charged not only for the Azure services that you utilize, but also for the services and expertise or the solution provided by the third party vendor. And here I want to clearly outline that the billing structures of these pre-made solutions are determined by the vendors themselves. So please, my friends, whenever you're purchasing anything from the Azure marketplace, please be very cautious and always read the pricing around these solutions. So today in the Azure Describe Management and Governance, we will learn about the factors that affect the cost in Azure. In the next episode, we will cover compare the pricing and total cost of ownership calculator. Very important concept. And then we will also cover describe Azure cost management tool. And then finally, we will discuss describe the purpose of tags. And of course, friends, if I'm delivering any value to you in your cloud journey, please do not close this video without pressing the like button. See, without your like, these videos will never reach to a wider audience. And this really helps me to get more subscribers. No cost for you to subscribe or like, but it really helps me to keep the content free. Subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for timely notifications. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.